All right. Perfect. So let's talk about what's the book called again? The horrors. Oh, it's so scary. Um, (laughs) The horror of the house of wills. One man's true story of, you know, whatever that brought him to his knees. (laughs) What's his name again? Do you remember the guy's name? Dylan something? Yeah, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. Yeah. You know, this is me. I'm I'm in a I'm a professional. (laughs) (laughs) Did I research? (laughs) Nah. (laughs) That's what you're here for. Well, and, and with that, I mean, I, I, I listened to the audio book while I was working and, uh, well, I'll get into it. I'll get into that. Uh, so we're going to be getting a lot more of like impressions than necessarily on page 52. He says this, where it's going to be like, I feel that it was like this kind of, but I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I wasn't. <laughs> okay. So. Daryl Marston. There we go. Look That's at it professionalism (laughs) that's it it. okay yeah yeah because I mean so I obviously have not read this book uh I it it was like what self-published it looks like it was self-published I think so or if if it just maybe like a small yeah I don't know I don't know It, it just looked I mean this is very unfair of me to blindly judge something and I'm going to do it anyway. It looked pretty silly. So <laughs> I was just kind of like, eh. but you, you uh, read it for all of us. Like you. T- <laughs> I took, I took one for the team. I took one for the team. I did. I took and one for the read- team. <laughs> so- Listen to it. Listen to it while I was, you know, working on a spreadsheet and puttering around my house. Um. Basically, the way that I found this book was a friend of mine in Cleveland posted that she had gotten it. And I I think it was like around last October or whatever. And I was super into my um, seasonal, I need to read scary stuff phase. And I was like, oh, I've never heard of this place. I had no idea. And this dude who is, you know, part of a, well-known ghost researching team that is like you know kind of started it all for the tv you know series and everything like that Mm -hmm. um I was like so it's got to be you know it's got to be legit and if you wrote a book about it I'm sure it's probably terrifying and that place sounds kind of terrifying yeah so I got on a wait list through um my library app for the audiobook so I can listen to it while I was working. And I remember asking my friend, I was just kind of like, so what did you think? And she was like, eh. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh... I can't wait for you to do it and 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 you tell me what you think. Like, oh okay. <laughs> right? Like, well, it exists. It certainly is there. <laughs> it is a book. It is a book that he published. <laughs> Um, and, you know, and, and a lot of it, I think a lot of my impression of it was, you know, being, being a voracious reader, I, I get, you know, my inner editor really comes out and I don't know who his editor was, but there was you know, some timeline issues, there were some um, contradictions, Mm -hmm. uh, like, just like straight up contradicting himself, um, where, in you know, the first part of the book, he's talking about how uh, anytime he goes to on a new investigation, he wants to know as little about the uh, the place as possible. He doesn't like to know. So that way, it's not influencing him and influencing his actions. Of course. And then, as it goes on he's like really mad at his friends for not telling him what i mean he was like yeah don't tell me anything about it why the fuck did you tell me anything about it oh my (laughs) god jerks (laughs) you know and it's just kind of like hey bro you you i mean you really kind of can't have both ways right right (laughs) 
either either you get the dossier in the packet or you don't right and then you can't be pissed at your friends who took you here voluntarily and didn't tell you anything about it when you're that much of a you know like no yeah don't tell me dude don't no no that's uh uh yeah so that's like that's a nice like so that sets the tone right where the is gent and we're i'm going to try to be as fair as possible especially since i have not read it and therefore do not have a right to have any kind of opinion but i do anyway um he (laughs) he um he had a a a legitimately intense experience at this Mm -hmm. place like Mm -hmm. and he felt traumatized by his experience and he wanted to write this book Mm -hmm. and um like with a few little interviews that I saw which were also like his interviews were contradictory as well which is interesting that you (laughs) that you pointed that out because it was like like and they were just like silly little interviews with local Mm -hmm. members like but it was still just like my dude what's uh what are we what what's going on what's going on with you like he just didn't even know how to tell his own story which I thought was yeah. which was really fascinating so let's start like and I know you're going off impressions because you didn't give it your full attention but mm-hmm. let's like start from the beginning as much as you can and just kind okay. of through the major beats if, as much as you can remember <laughs> I'm sorry they're gonna be silly so I apologize but if I if I get them out of the room they're gonna whine and get even crazier so I apologize if they're (laughs) silly in the background okay so the book um I'm gonna start out with like my own personal uh I had never like I said I had never even heard of the house of wills until my friend had posted about it and I looked it up and looked up the history and um was a, did it start out as like a masonic was there like masonic temple kind of involved at some point so it was um it was designed by a 33 degree mason who like put all of that in there that's it. all the different symbolism and designed it specifically with the intent of um oops sorry um of harnessing and amplifying energy because it was it was he was designing it it's a german singing hall that's it all that yeah 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 and then it became like that like a hungarian cultural center or something um and you know and i was looking i and then and then of course the 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 funeral home the largest african-american funeral home um and I was, I was looking at all of that and I was kind of researching it and I was, and I, I wasn't really finding anything that was terribly frightening. Oh, yeah. So I was like, oh, so this dude, you know, if he wrote a book about this, I, I'm expecting, you know, poltergeist. I'm expecting a friend to go like screaming backwards and, and yanked around and like whatever that movie, that house on a haunted hill movie was that like had the doctor's that's what i'm expecting which might have been uncharitable (laughs) maybe maybe a little bit high but it was it was like oh okay okay so he starts out and he's and and in the book he's talking about um how much experience he has investigating haunted places um you know he doesn't necessarily you know he doesn't necessarily have how can I put this he's not one to sit there and say like oh yeah I'm totally sensitive to uh energies and spirits and things like that but he's also is if that makes any sense whatsoever um like he's not going to call himself like a medium or you know by any stretch of the means but um, like so many of us, he is, he is sensitive to that. And, you know, talking about the first time you ever saw a person who was not alive, um, and, you know, kind of getting into that and all, you know, all of his experiences with the, uh, TV show and, um, 
how it was, I want to say that it was in the, when he went to Cleveland, it was somewhere in the teens, like maybe 2016, something like that. Um, 2015, I don't know, somewhere around there. Uh, his friends, he had some friends from somewhere in Pennsylvania or the Ohio border, whatever, say, hey, we're going to go check out this place uh, called the House of Wills in East Cleveland. And um, you guys should totally come with us or you should totally come with us. And he was like, oh, OK, you know, and this is when he starts with, like, you know, don't tell me anything about it. Don't tell me anything about it. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so they get there and. he they're being led around by like a daytime caretaker or something like that and he's like okay well before we go in we're gonna have to clear the place like with firearms oh because it's east cleveland oh okay okay yeah like actually like of vagabonds and and... right right which i thought you know, and then of course he goes into how he knows how to do that with firearms and stuff that he always is strapped yeah. and whatnot and how, um, you know, he got out his trusty sidearm and stuff. And it was kind of like, okay, <laughs> like, that's a little, that's like escalated pretty quickly, you know, like going after, you know, with guns blazing. Um, oh my god (laughs) literally literally and so the uh, like this caretaker person was kind of like well you know i i don't stick around and you know anytime near sunset and blah 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 and um just seemed really (laughs) no he seemed really really like cryptic and well you'll just have to talk to the other person who takes care of this place and she'll show you around and um you know this is once again where like kind of the the writing style is a little juvenile i guess is a that's a good term it is it's a little juvenile because oh this tadpole that is enough um because he's like saying a lot of stuff that is eventually one second yeah but that is enough so he's he's saying a lot of stuff this is that whole <laughs> um where like every at the end of every chapter or everything is like and it could also be the way that the narrator was reading it <laughs> i was just like but i was yet to know what it would be like to be brought upon my knees in the house of wills and little did i know that i was going to be scared out of my mind at the house of wills so and there was like a lot of like you know the like in my mind, because I'm I'm a visualizer, and I could just in my mind there is a lot of like side eyeing and and like you know and like looks between everybody and and not a lot of conversation, but everybody's just getting that ooh, it's gonna be real real spooky, right? <laughs> and then homeboy goes off on a tangent about. East Cleveland, which speaking of uncharitable was pretty uncharitable. I mean, like, like I, I understand that East Cleveland is rough yeah. or has, has a reputation of being rough. And I, and I totally get that. Um, I have, I have friends who live in East Cleveland um, and it is also one of the oldest parts of the city. Yeah. Um, that is where you have all like the historical stuff, uh, like the university district and everything like that. Um, and you know, just basic city um I'm trying to think of the right words here. 
like um, economic structure, you know, as people move to the suburbs and, and push further west and everything like that, the houses around there get, you know, cheaper. And then you've got like this disparity between the haves and the have nots and everything. And, and it's a whole socioeconomic thing that he's basically just saying, oh, yeah, this place is totally, totally hood. Right. And it was just kind of gross. Right. Right. Like, like he never like really came out and said it, but it was like gross just the way he was talking about it and and um how unsafe how unsafe they felt and um you know the attention that they were attracting and everything like that and <clears throat> and so that was a little gross right but um you know one of the things that they did talk about of course was how people in the neighborhood will um cross the street to avoid it um nobody likes to talk about it nobody likes to look at it they don't like walking around it um that its reputation is just it's just ooky yeah so they go in and this is kind of where everything gets a little bit muddled because either i was Let's be. I was might might have been checking Facebook at the time or <laughs> working on something. I mean, I don't know because it was just kind of like, okay, dude. Um, but I distinctly remember they talked about they were on their walk through, and he talked about like the big. There was like a great big hall that had a bunch of like demonic statues in it. Oh yeah. Okay. Which, which were created by. I don't know if he's the current owner or not, but it was created by the owner at the time because he is a, I don't, I don't know if he's a Satanist in like the satanic temple or like the church of Satan. Cause like, is there's a difference between the two, you know? Right. I mean, I, and, and so I, I wasn't able, cause he kind of, he kind of went back and forth between the two and it's like, okay, so is he doing like, rituals like Anton LaVey or is he just like hey I believe in you know your own agency having your own agency and it was really difficult to tell right and of course so he no I'm sorry go ahead I was gonna say and he probably had no idea the difference between the two because I like again one of the brief interviews that I read where he's like I don't I mean no shade against the owner but he's a satanist and you know do what you want but I don't want to mess with that and I was like oh right I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and there's a lot of that in the book there's a lot a lot of that in the book um but yeah you know and I was just like it's like I kind of thought that once again you know somebody who is part of this world-renowned ghost hunting team that would be something they would know right <laughs> i mean that'd be the first time that he's come across this like <laughs> the right. world is just filled <laughs> with these types there's nothing yeah. i mean it's just a bunch of goths come on <laughs> right and it's kind of and i think it is important to distinguish between yeah. the two different types because that also I think is is when you start to get into you know if somebody is doing rituals and things like that versus you know somebody who is like I said believes in the free agency of the self right so it sounds to me like the owner is somebody who does the rituals and things like that and um they walk into and they see all these weird creepy the statues that that wait, was his name Daryl or Dylan Daryl <laughs> like I already just forgot um but Daryl was just like could not believe that the guy created them was just like you know I don't know what other influence he had when he made them but they were not right and he had an episode in that room of just kind of feeling gross 
you know, just kind of starting to psychically feel gross. Um, I remember they go into the basement and the guide is like, well, be careful about, you know, you're like, if you have asthma or anything like that, um, is there's a bunch of mold down here and Daryl flips out and is like, oh, so not only is this place haunted, but it's also like really unsafe. And that just yes. pissed me off. And it's like, dude, it sounds, you know, I, the pictures that I've seen online, this place is kind of falling apart. And that's yes. part of it. You're going to have more. It's Ohio. He's from Delaware. It's probably humid there, too. But just like, oh, my God, I need a little respirator. Da, 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 da. Like, all right, what else? Um, so as as they're going through, you know, it, it just seemed like there was a lot of he was running in and out of the building and pissed because of mold and pissed because it was really creepy in there and pissed because the guy was a Satanist and then he was pissed because the experiences that he had were, um, you know, super scary to him which and i'm going to be absolutely 100 percent honest with you if i had any even like an iota of the experiences that anybody has there i mean i would probably be pissing my pants right because i'm a baby however once again this dude is goes on so many of these ghost hunts and stuff and it really i think the reason why i'm not really able to recall specifics other than like I know they heard um a voice that said believe really loudly in one of the rooms and they heard a bunch of footsteps running where there shouldn't be footsteps and stuff like that um but I really do think that part of it is just because it doesn't sound like anything that was that terrifying right so it's interesting because he I mean, he's been to many haunted sites before. I'm sure a lot of them were in dilapidated buildings and has heard plenty of disembodied voices and footsteps and that kind of thing. So like, it's actually, that almost makes it more interesting to me that those, you know, seemingly, uh, uh, what's the right word? Like, um, standard haunted Mm -hmm. yeah like standard haunted experiences like it's interesting that house of wills somehow those those standard experiences amplified in his system to a point where he lost his fucking mind yeah 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 and 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 i mean i i i especially after what you said and kind of thinking it over and stuff like that you know I can kind of understand how how that exactly would happen like that place would probably make it even that much because you know it it sounds like it was built to be an energy trap yes and what better way to amplify any kind of energy than to provoke it right you know so so and and one of the things he was also talking about i do remember was that he felt like there was a dominant spirit that was kind of controlling all of the other spirits Mm -hmm. in the house of wills um, uh, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's how it was. But he feels like the the which I can understand, especially with the whole kind of insidious thing that attaches to people. It's like a mold spore, right? That just gets bigger. Like it, and and so in my head, I just kind of see this large 
energy basically that is at this point so in in the building itself that it's not necessarily like it's not necessarily going to be like any kind of human or anything like that. Like it's almost like the building of right. itself. And, and so when, when he's talking about it controlling, you know, I don't, it, it doesn't sound like it's necessarily like, Oh, this, you know, master spirits, like, Hey, Hey, go touch that guy on the shoulder and see what happens. It reports back. Ah. But it, it, it does sound like there are so many, like if, if, if that place can amplify a living energy, what's it going to do with pure energy? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand where he's coming from with that. And I don't think he's full of shit. I mean, I do think in some ways he's full of shit, but I don't think as far as that is concerned, he's full of shit at all. Um, so before the we book get- was- Go oh, ahead. Before we get into like theories and that kind of thing, um, do you like what were the major haunted moments that you can remember? Like, if there <clears throat> were any, well, like I said, the ones that happened there, um, were like the footsteps and the disembodied voices, and then like the general feeling of unease and anger and illness and I- things like that, um. Uh, and, and, and this is where the, the book was kind of divided into two parts because there was the house of wills and then there was what, ap- what came after Okay. in his own place. And it was almost like it, it wasn't so much as the experience in the house of wills, it in and of itself that, you know, brought him to his knees. It was what happened afterwards when he got home to Delaware. Ah, okay. So he got home and was just um, terribly bothered by by it, you know, real kind of pissy with his friends for taking him there, um, uh, depressed, anxiety, despair. Um, he had uh, he has a couple kids. Um, and was really worried about his family. Uh, he's seeing things in the house, seeing figures in the house that, you know, were not there before. Um, everything like that. Uh, uh, one thing that I do remember, he was, um, it was like winter time or something like that. And he was in his garage working on something and he heard this buzzing noise and there was a, a fly like beating itself against the garage windows inside. And then there were two and then there were 25 and then, you know, so all of a sudden these flies are everywhere. Um, and you know, so he's just like, okay, so this, this is, this is part of it. This is, you know, clearly it is, you know, something demonic that, that I brought back with me from the house of wills. Um, I don't remember exactly what he did to cleanse himself of it. I know that at one point some uh, a sage was involved, which I oh, bless him made that face too. <laughs> that, face too. that okay, um, great. You know, it helps with some things. It does. <laughs> Not yeah, not help you with the whatever side house of wills, but you know, I'm sure it yeah, a little bit. yeah, yeah. I mean, as you know, and you know, and basically he, you know, he's and that's and this is also too when he started talking about his um how how his faith in the Christian God really got renewed, and um basically he just he just prayed every, you know he's not the praying type um but basically just started praying all the time, yeah. all the time. And that really helped clean out or at least get him better to where he was going to work and not being a jerk to everybody. And um, 
the house just felt different and it felt cleaner and it felt lighter. Um, but then like six months later or something like that, um, one of his sons passed away. Oh yeah. So it is sad, very sad. Um, and while he, while he never really says that it has anything to do with his experience in the house of wills he's like i also can't not not believe it right right like the influence stretched that far yeah and so i mean that that fucking sucks yeah a lot. yeah Holy um God. yeah yeah so uh, at one point think his friends take him or try to take him back to the house of wills and he's just like you know f off good for him dicks no way <laughs> um and i don't remember if he went in or not i think he did but it was just like his his faith in god protected him or something i don't know by this point i was just trying to get it over <laughs> trying to get the book over with it was almost the end of my working day you know, I listened to it all day long and was just trying to get it over with. Um, so I really, but, but those, those are the things that like the flies and the, and the figures and the noises, um, and, the, and just that feeling, right. I've had that feeling before I've mental health experienced things like that. Yeah. 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 And the mental health deteriorating and mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the like, and it's even funny, interesting that you talk about like his irrational anger mm-hmm. and how contradictory he became, especially even within his the his own story within his own writing. And it's like that having experienced the entity that's there that reached through space and time and started messing with me before I even entered physically into that space. Mm-hmm. Like I completely understand even though like it's it's hard for me not to roll my eyes because male bravado will always make me roll my eyes regardless like I I I need to be more compassionate and understand that the bravado is his way of coping with something that was so big and so intense and so out of his fear Mm -hmm. that he like could only respond in this one way in order to get through it and i and i have no right to judge because i did the exact same fucking thing i used hyper masculine bravado to confront something that i was not prepared for that was way mm-hmm. over my head um and yeah i'm still gonna roll my eyes at him but i'll roll my eyes at myself too so <laughs> you know it's, it's 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 being able to recognize recognize that I guess. Yeah. No, I mean, I, and I, I totally understand. And, and I don't know, man, I, I, like his, his son passing away, it just coincidental or, or faded, or if it did have something to do with the house of wills, I don't know. It just really, really, really sucks. And I feel so sorry for him um for that you know there there are uh, yeah but I'm also critiquing a book so right right (laughs) I mean I'm gonna talk about you know the the idiosyncrasies and the uh contradictions and everything and and how he just really 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 latched on to the whole the owner being a satanist or a satan worshiper and or satanic in whatever way he is and was just like i'm not saying that the house of wills is haunted because of that because you do what you want i just know you know my lord and savior jesus christ would not like that or whatever i mean it you know i'm paraphrasing of course of course but um there was a lot a lot of that of like kind of seeming to shift the blame onto that guy and his creepy statues Right. Which is so interesting because I mean, yeah, because that owner, there is something about him 
there is something where like you eat like for me like when I first laid on eyes on the owner it was just like ugh, another goth who you know got his hands on a property so that he get could get laid above his station and you know like maybe we should stop letting goths have cool things you know <laughs> my, my friend my friend who introduced you know who got the book um got it at a signing with Daryl and she met the owner at the same one and she's like yeah they both pretty much gave me the ick like both of them just no so like, much. All right. there and like there's something like and I feel like we've discussed this before like this siren call of paranormal spots right that's calling oh, yeah. type of person and I am someone who has succumbed to this so many times because I'm fascinated by it. And it's, you know, it's curious and it can be fun and it's thrilling. And I'm also part of the problem. Right. And I, and I, and I have to, you know, contend with that while also understand, like having a better understanding of the energetics of what I'm coming across normally mm -hmm. until I get my ass handed to me. Um, but like, What's interesting about the owner for House of Wills is that one, I think there was a siren call to get him in there, that he was taken over and now is in certain ways complicit in whatever is whatever entity, whatever that that um mold like entity that has spores, he's bringing people in. Mm -hmm. dismissing the haunting aspect while he's doing his tours even though people are coming here specifically because it's haunted right dismisses it and and downplays it and like it's feeding feeding it just constantly feeding it and it's just it's it's such a it's a very complicated space everything that's happening there is so unusual and it's in the way that it's uh i don't know i don't know it's it's like it's bizarro this is definitely like become my white whale a bit <laughs> <laughs> oh i can i can totally understand why um you know because one of the things you know, this kind of ties back with, with when I was looking it up before I ever read the book or anything like that, or found out you were going or anything. Um, and I was doing research on it and, and there just wasn't a whole no, lot. Really. Yeah. And, and a place that has that kind of history and especially, um, once it became the funeral home yeah. and everything like that, you, I would almost expect there to be way more than there was a lot of it was just you know based on like the plain dealer and the the cleveland newspaper and things like that um you know just small little articles and you know here's a picture of the cloud room here's a picture of the egyptian room and that's i wanted more of that because people would just kind of say you know kind of kind of like what you just said they're just like it's bizarre that yeah it's interesting that you point because uh we found the same thing uh Rachel and I were like why is there no real information on no. it's so important historically mm -hmm. largest black owned funer funeral parlor that was uh owned by the man who started the Cleveland chapter of the NAACP the Cleveland chapter of the Negro Welfare Association. He got the money to buy that that property from a a lawsuit that he had against the local housing authority because they shut down one of his previous um, funeral parlors illegally. Oh, wow. And he actually wow. was able to win, which is another huge moment, like historical moment. And mm -hmm. how is that all getting obfuscated? Like, yeah. it, 
like why isn't there more wow. going and like and then there's nothing on the owner there is like oh um, you can't find like dude owns a big paranormal spot and clearly has an ego but he's not on social he's not like you can't find information about him he's also not doing things like um utilizing the cleveland historical like um money right to, like like and why why would right. make the free money i mean unless unless the purpose unless his purpose is not to restore it or you know his idea of restoration restoration isn't going necessarily with preservation right. um you know, if he's going to turn it into some, you know, chamber 3.0 or whatever, um, or, or what, or if he's just going to let it fall to waste, but yeah, like what is, why is it still just rotting and falling apart, even though this guy, it, it sounds like, I don't know if they kind of started anything, uh, trying to fix it up or, or what, you know, he's, they were talking about how he wants to turn it into a community center. Right. He wants to turn it back. He wants to give it back to the local neighborhood. Um, I mean, it also sounds like the local neighborhood's like, Oh no, thank you. <laughs> no. But you know, he's trying to get it back to, to being an integral part of that neighborhood. Right. Um, well, he says, but that. yet, <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, of course. But like, you know, and what I was talking about with like um, that that TV show, I started looking up, like I specifically Googled uh, episodes of paranormal investigative shows that go to the House of Wills. Okay. Because I, you can't really, I mean, like, you know, we said the stuff that you found online, you find online isn't, it doesn't give you it doesn't satisfy the curiosity, I guess, because it's like you have this place that is supposedly just like the pool from Poltergeist. Right. But in a building. Right, right. But then you can't, it's all like, oh, this place, it's pretty cool. Have you been to uh, like the Franklin House or whatever it's called, or to the Lakewood Cemetery and seen the Witch's Ball? And it's like we all know about that. I've never heard of the House of Wills. And when you were talking about when you when you mentioned that, it's just like this guy just being complicit in it and everything. I have another friend who mentioned that she is a client who does seances there oh okay which to me you know that oh. just kind of sounds like feeding the beast yep yeah oh my god That's... and if you're letting people do that you know and i'm not saying that you know i'm not trying to judge her clients thought process or anything like that i mean if i weren't such a scary pants i would be like yo hook me up with her because i want to sit in one of those right and then figure out how to you know clean myself with spiritual brillo pads but um i just just because i'm curious i'm curious like what do you get um but i've seen you know i've, I've at this point i've seen probably about four tv shows um, that take place there, there or that three or four that, and they're all, kind of the same where they have so much stuff going on that everybody's just kind of left like shell shocked. Yeah. Like, yeah. did we get that on camera? I don't even know. We should probably just go. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, like you said in the beginning where you're like, you're almost expecting like poltergeist and you're expecting the big bang and the big, like the Hollywood version of hauntings. Mm -hmm. That's not how house of wills rolls. Everything is subtle. Everything is deeply like, and, and this is all paranormal, but this place in particular, 
it plays on um the 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 kind of subtle um ramping up of dread mm. and of making you feel a little crazy and like and it likes and it just seems like you know you'll have whatever experience that you have at the house and it'll be this visceral thing for you personally but it wouldn't be anything that someone looking from the outside would be like that that's not that big of a deal but for you it feels so intense because it's attacking mm-hmm. your body system and then it's what it does to you when you leave that yeah. is the really intense thing and like when i left um my next day the way that i like the way that I felt drained and like I had gotten hit by a bus. Um, the last time I felt that drained and that exhausted by something was when I had done um, a wedding and I had read for like 30 people in a row or something like that. Where it was oh like, yeah, sure. Where, where, where it was like, I had nothing left. I felt like that plus like as if, I couldn't fully be in my body because something else had, had kind of pushed me out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, and uh, I'm going to be posting our conversation before I finish my uh, house of woods episode, because it's taking me fucking forever to, to write it because it's fighting me. (laughs) The story is fighting me so hard. Um, and maybe that's what's happening to everybody else. Maybe that's what happened. That's what's happening to the journalists. Maybe that's what's happening to everybody else. That it's it's it it it's such and it's such a deeply personal, you know, it affects you so deeply and so personally, and then it fights you with this story that then all you can do is like, here's some pictures and this place is haunted and it's cool. Right. Here's the right. history. Here's a little bit. We'll just say what the plain dealer says because there's nothing else out there. I know. I wish I was the type of person who had the patience to like dive into archives, but I am not. I am not that person. I would love to write a comprehensive book on House of Wills, but man, that that is an undertaking. But yeah, like the the when I removed the entity from me, it was like, you know, and like how you visualize it's it's not what's actually happening. It's just how your mind is repre- like creating representation for you but it was like this like gargoyle type thing that was so big like Mm -hmm. even though it was a spore it had rapidly grown within my system it was not even 24 hours later and this thing was one of the biggest attachments I've ever experienced in my field when I, mm. when I remove attachments and other kinds of entities and infringements, they, in my mind's eye appear small. They're not they're It's like how they're interacting. It's more subtle. And this thing had rapidly expanded. So it was huge in my system. Um, and it, and like I said, it was a spore. So it wasn't even the entity itself. It was just an, a clone of it. And then I um, cleared my friend Elizabeth a few weeks later. Um, she she had an attachment as well. And like, here's how insidious this entity is. I knew she had an attachment. And yet something in me, a little voice, was like, if you tell her, she'll stop being your friend. Oh, Right. Ooh. And it wasn't even like a huge voice because if it was a yeah. huge voice that had said that to me, I'd be like, what's talking to me? It was an impression. It was this impression of, oh, if I say something, I might lose this really important friendship to me. And I just let it go, which is not. And then like, she finally got a hold of me and she's like, Hey, you know how you talked about how you had an attachment? Um, mm. I think, She's like, my health has been really, really bad. And maybe I have one too. And I'm like, you do, you do. I don't know why I haven't told you. I don't know why I haven't st- like, didn't step up and clear you. And then that's when I like became aware of that, like 
influence over me that Mm -hmm. basically preyed upon um, an insecurity that I didn't even know that I had. Because it's not like, like Elizabeth has only been awesome and, and like totally on board with all of my weirdo stuff. She loves Mm -hmm. it too, has never been judgmental about it at all. And yet I had this barely deeply held subconscious fear that if I were to reveal what I knew that she would, she would stop being friends. So, So, yeah. And so I had to like, look at that as well, where it's like, whoa, like these things are so insidious because you don't like things you don't even realize that you hold beliefs that you don't even know are, are in your system. They will, yeah. they will target those things and influence how you think and how you react. And like, yeah, the shit is insidious. <laughs> So when I cleared hers, hers were, was even more enormous because it had been there for several weeks and she's still feeling the effects of it, even though it's out of her system. Like it really, it fucked her up. Like house of wills is no joke. House of wills is not a place to just go for funsies. I am now understanding. And like when people are like, Oh my God, how do I go? I'm like, I don't think that's good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah because I mean I you know before before I had read the book and everything like that or whatever yeah. and you were talking about it and um I was just kind of like oh I kind of want to go but the more the more I think about it and that's the thing is too is that, you know using the word insidious and using the word feeding energy and everything like I've not even been and I've devoted this much energy to it right already um yeah and you know it's pretty I mean it's pretty innocent energy but I'm still devoting energy to it and thinking about it and putting that out there in the universe and um yeah I you know like last night I was I was thinking about like my my methods of like spiritual cleansing or whatever and it's like I don't even know if I would know what to do in that situation um I don't I don't, I've never experienced anything that heavy and that, that just complex, Yeah. um, yeah. you know, that, and I don't even know what I would do and I'm not sure I don't want to, uh, find out. Right. Either. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, you know, and I, I am, I constantly question like, you know, that whatever is there, I genuinely feel like needs to not be there anymore. I mean, because it's creating such harm, it's creating a whole lot of harm. And I like, you know, for, I've been going back and forth of like, I feel like my story is not done with it. Like, I feel like I'm going to be going back to House of Wills. And yet I, I'm i really struggling with the ethics of that because to go back, like I, I, want, I wanted to go back and I still kind of do with a, a ghost hunting team so that I can get access to more of the building that I can't get mm-hmm. access to with the tour. Mm-hmm. But like, is that ethical of me to allow other people to set foot into that space? Um, even though I'm like everyone that I talk to, because my friend John Killian, who has been on my show and I've been on his show and he he has a ghost hunting team, like he and I have had long conversations, and I'm like, you know, and he believes me when I say that place is no joke. And he like at least, you know, I have cleared him of other things. So even if he doesn't quite agree with how I view energy clearing, he at least entertains it. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, even then I'm like, I don't know if I want 
to be leading a group of people into this space, even if I can clear them, because it's going to, it's not, will it attach? It's going to attach and it will play on a whole lot of unresolved stuff in people. And even if I clear it, that stuff is going to be forced up and out. And like, is that responsible of me to put, to allow people to be put into that situation? And so like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that question is. Like, should I go in with a team? I mean, cause you don't have to do it in the space. Like, should I, I have a couple of other people who've been trained in the kind of clearing that I do. Should we uh-huh. just clear it? You know, like, but then what happens? Cause I think you're right. I think that the entity and the building are now so tied to one another that they're indistinguishable from one another. Mm-hmm. So what happens if I yeah. clear the entity, what happens to the space and what happens to the people who are very tied into it? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Cause I mean, it's like, it's like, you almost want to go there, you know, treating it like a historical site where you don't want to disturb anything. Right. You don't want to change anything. You don't want to disturb anything, but at the same time, a historical site isn't interacting on a spiritual, physical and emotional level. I mean, my only bit of advice is, is, you know, if you do this and I think you're right, I do think that, you know, I'm pretty sure that you're going to go back, but I think that making sure that the people on this team understand, or at least entertain the idea, like you said, of (laughs) protection, you know, almost like treating it like, you know, kind of like, Hey, here's your spiritual safe word. And, you know, so not only are we going to protect you before you even go in there, you're, you're going to get cleared when you come out, whether you think you need it or not. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. I mean, that would be the only way that I think that would even be responsible. Yeah. For sure. If they say no, then don't go. Yeah. At least you can't come with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's, and I kind of, kind of said as much just in passing where it's like, if you're with me, like, this is how we are going to move forward so that I, that I'm acting in integrity. Oh, but yeah, like, and it's like, but am I like, am I still under its influence? Cause I got influenced before I even stepped foot. You know, and I, and I think part of that was because of the eclipse. I feel like the eclipse and I, like there was something about that blood moon eclipse that made everything more like, and like the thinning, thinning of the veil. Like I just got access so easily, so easily. Um, And that I couldn't think clear. I couldn't, I wasn't acting the way that I normally would act like, you know, it really amplified my most, um, immature impulses, you know? And so it's like, it's constantly like, Oh, yeah. (laughs) Am I fully in charge of my, my decision-making process? Fucking hope so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I was, I'm gonna write a book that's like my friend was possessed by the horror of the House of Wills. <laughs> that's gonna be my book, Daryl. Please do. I was uncharitable. I'm sorry for being uncharitable, <laughs> but um, not really. You know, it's just <sighs> we should totally write a book together. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be incredible. Um. <laughs> maybe not about the house of wills let's start someplace nicer uh that isn't so scary because i am a baby i am a baby i watch scary movies and i'm like yeah it wasn't that scary and then as soon as i go upstairs go to bed it's like oh god but what if thinking about that thing that was on the movie brings it here right under right. my bed 
and then you know i'm just imagination um you know i just i i i think that that is definitely not finished for you and i think that also we're probably going to hear a lot more about it yeah you know because it seems like it seems like a lot of the um stuff i've been seeing has been within the past few years yeah yeah and being from the Cleveland area, I, like I said, I had never even heard of it before. I never heard of it before. Um, I had no idea it existed. And I mean, and like you were saying, you know, just based on the historical importance of, of the funeral home and the, uh, civil rights movement. Yeah. Yeah. Right here in Ohio, you know, you'd think, <laughs> something something yeah. but you know i one of the other things that i'm sorry i'm kind of like all over the place but one of the other things that i was also thinking about too is that even before that place was built um i mean cleveland is an old city it is an old old city and that whole part of of ohio was like kind of of like political importance when the colonies were were you know the only were just colonies right. um that whole that whole like along the lake and everything like that and then you also have the uh <clears throat> you know anything that comes with the huge body of water right and and you know it, it it's it's i mean Cleveland is just such an interesting town and it's almost like, of course, of course, this place is haunted as fuck. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And and like we said, the, all the Masonic stuff, like mm -hmm. when I, um, you know, when I, when I did the tour, when I did the tour, it was so interesting because uh, it was, there was a void feeling there. Like the, I think I already told you this, but like the, the entity that was there literally hid everything yeah. um, from me where like there was no stray consciousness there were no thought forms there was no earthbound there was nothing and Elizabeth made the point she's like yeah there wasn't even an echo and we were in cavernous rooms and there was wow. any echoes I was like holy shit I didn't notice that but she's right uh, like it had done such a big, like, boom, so mm -hmm. that I could not perceive what was there. Mm -hmm. And neither could Rachel or Elizabeth, both of who are very good with their intuition as well. But I did, when I entered into the cloud room, um, I didn't know. So I didn't do a whole lot of research before I went, but when I stepped foot into that room, I saw in my mind's eye, um, four men with hoods over their, like bags over their heads sitting on this tiny stage that's on the very back end. And I was like, oh, this is where the Masons did their rituals. And, uh, the owner confirmed it like a little bit later when he went into his spiel and I was like, I fucking knew it. <laughs> and that was the one room where I decided to do some clearing, mm -hmm. um, not and nothing too crazy but i was just like okay this is the one room where i feel like i need to pulse out and just like get some things moving because um like it was the the only place where i felt like i even had permission to do so which was interesting yeah um, but like whatever the masons had done because masons are very good at creating spaces to harvest harvest energy um like whatever they had done and whatever symbolism that they had created uh and and uh put in place created this like perfect storm for some of the most insidious shit <laughs> like like everything there's just <clears throat> everything in this building it's such a great story if it wasn't so desperately real and 
and dangerous. I mean, this shit's dangerous. And normally I don't, I wouldn't say that about a lot of paranormal spots, but this is one where like, there are very real consequences to interacting yeah. with house of wills and it, and it, and it's, it wants it right now. Like you said, like out of nowhere, it's suddenly in everybody's consciousness that's into the paranormal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That is really interesting. And it is really weird to think that, you know, we're still devoting parts of us to it. Right. Even if we haven't been there. Right, right. You know, that it's, it's, yeah, that's just wild. It's wild. Yeah. I, and I don't know why, you know, it, 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 it seemed like such a fascinating thing and it, it, it doesn't really sound that fascinating, you know, but it, to me, it was just like, oh my God, I have to know. I have to know. Yes. Like this place is crazy. It's fascinating. And it's like, but it, you know, I can't stress enough like reading about it it's really not <laughs> I mean right. other than like points about it but but you know I think that goes back to what you were saying about it being such like a deeply personal experience mm -hmm. and those consequences are so deeply personal too yeah that it's not like you can say oh everybody um that comes out of there is going to get sick or everybody that comes out of there is going to face you know some weird subconscious fuckery right. that they've never experienced before um you know it's just it, and I think that's part of the scariest thing is that you don't know how it's going to affect people and how they're going to be affected by it right especially since people are normally very dismissive right mm -hmm. like like if their mental health starts to tank well, they'll mm -hmm. be like, oh, it's because work or this, like you're not immediately going to go to, oh, I went to this spooky spot and suddenly my mental health issues exacerbated, like, mm -hmm. especially if it's subtle, you know, yeah. you'll find any mundane reason possible, which is the normal and, and like the reasonable way to move forward. You don't want to jump to paranormal conclusions. And yet that's also the, the the why it's so effective why this entity mm -hmm. is so effective because it plays on our hyper logical hyper rational way of moving through the world um that it can just kind of tip the scales a little bit like it just puts its thumb on the scales a little bit to make you just a little bit more depressed just a little mm -hmm. bit more you know self-flagellating or whatever it is and just you know m those voices just ratchet up a little bit and uh you wouldn't even know that that was yeah. a different an outside influence so yeah, mm. yeah right. it's, it's scary it is it is yeah the book not so much but you right. know, thinking about it and thinking about how this place exists and, you know, and the, and the corroborations between your experience and his even, um, with, with, you know, cause and effect and everything like that. I think that's, uh, just, yeah, 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 yeah. So much, so much weirdness, so much weirdness that I like, I hope someone like a super hardcore researcher gets their teeth into this because there's just so much there. Like mm -hmm. there, this is such an amazing story that like, I hope somebody feels inspired to like dive deep and really yeah it into the history the hidden history and like why was it hidden to begin with mm -hmm. what's going on there so I don't know yeah it's not me <laughs> no no I mean I you know I'd I'd be interested to see what the neighborhood was like before it was built and you know what 
Yeah, because it was Jewish. It was a um, Jewish. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just to see what the history of that neighborhood and, you know, what all may have happened there, you know, kind of like, kind of like how, um, you know, I was, I was thinking, and this might be totally off base. I don't know. Like I said, I, you know, not been there, but you know, I, I was, I was thinking about that and I was, I was trying to think about like, um, like how Franklinton, you know, super old and how that 1913 flood kind of has created this hotbed of activity Right. In this neighborhood, even though a lot of that neighborhood has changed and different and no longer even there. But right. did something like that happen there? I mean, not necessarily flood or anything like that, but like did something happen in that neighborhood or in that area that maybe caused energies and, and, and spirits and things like that to sort of walk to this one place right and did all of that spiritual flocking happen despite the masonic influence or because of the masonic influence does it predate or did it start well after and you know what came first the the big like alien mold entity or the other stuff i don't know I, I think that would be very fascinating to find out but i do not have that kind of attention span right yeah and like before we close this out like i i keep forgetting there's this really interesting church that's right next to house of wills it's now a baptist church and it's one of the most like the lar- one of the largest i think in the nation but definitely in the state of ohio and it's beautiful and like has this gigantic stained glass dome over it and it used to be a jewish temple but is now baptist church which is really interesting and like all like rachel elizabeth and i all three of us had this distinct impression that the two buildings were intrinsically intrinsically linked somehow that they're at least in conversation with one another in one way or another but we don't like like the quick brief uh experience we didn't really get to explore into it but there's definitely something else happening with this baptist church that's literally right next door like yeah another missing piece to this whole hmm. crazy ass yeah thing. so i don't know yeah, like you just touch the buildings right right oh my gosh like just touch them i don't I, have to go in i could just touch them just touch it. Yeah. Like I, I feel like when I go back, that's going to be part of part of the exploration, but like, I need, I want to go back with like uh, an army of intuitives. <laughs> Get me on a good day. I might say yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> we'll then we'll go to the goth bar afterwards. Go dancing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> that's where goths belong. <laughs> right. Right, not fucking up energy traps. God. Oh shit. Yeah, that's oh, so cool, but so weird. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those where I'm like, oh, people should genuinely be afraid of this. <laughs> so like, it's like you, you know, uh the wild animal analogy where it's like you know, a lot of these paranormal spaces, you can enter them. And like, as long as you have a a genuine respect, you know, and a lot of Mm -hmm. people think that respect means just not provoking, but it's like, no, you need to like be fully in your own bodily autonomy and be able to differentiate your energy from a Mm different, from anything that's outside of you, which is hard as I learned, right. It can be very hard, even when you have reached high levels of mastery with that. Um, and so like, but you know, for most of these paranormal spaces, all you're dealing with is like some earthbounds or thought forms and maybe some tulpas. Uh, and so most people are gen generally safe 
going into mm-hmm. those spaces as long as they're not actively trying to create harm. Um, but like with all wild animals, like you don't know what which one's going to like fucking go berserker on you. <laughs> and how right. well is a berserker. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Feral. Feral. Exactly. <laughs> Rabbit even. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. So <laughs> this was so much fun. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> I, I like, appreciate you and I love you. <laughs> I love you too. No, thanks for, for taking one for the team and reading the okay <laughs> normal book ever. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would probably give it, you know, out of five stars, I'd probably say like a 2.75. Oh, that's nice. And, and like it's not the worst I've ever read, but yeah, the, the editor really needed to do a better job. If there was one, yeah, if there even was one, if there even <laughs> was, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you, my friend. Thank yep. you so much for this. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, you have an amazing rest of your day, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna. Stop recording, but stick around.